In this segment, I want to show you the stuff I'm working on, both my knitting projects as well as some spinning projects. And the spinning really still is revolving around my lace weight experiments. Um, and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. I did do quite a bit of lace weight discussions last week and actually got a lot of really great feedback and advice and um, ideas from you guys through the comments and stuff, which I really, really appreciate. I mean, I'm, it's funny, I'm really not doing this to educate. I'm actually learning quite a bit more about the craft and stuff since I started the YouTube channel. So I really appreciate all that uh, information and sharing you guys are doing after my episode launch. So on the spinning stuff, so these are the three skeins. I talked about them at length last week. The first skein I did with the lace kit, and this is Caitlin's wool. I did not weigh this when I dried it. And so that was, that's a, that was an interesting topic that came up in a lot of the comments, some ideas for that. This is the second attempt. I feel like I got a little more proficient with it, and this one I did weigh when I dried it. This is just show and tell. I'm not gonna go into the data that I collected. And then this is the, I skeined up some of the Jameson and Smith, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, as part of my checklist of things I wanna do, I wanna wash this, dry it, and see if it gets some of its resilience back, because right now it's pretty flat. So I've made a checklist of the other stuff I wanted to do as part of just really getting uh, exploring lace uh, weight spinning. The first thing I wanted to do is uh, change the drive band on my rows, which I did do, videoed that. I think it's going to probably be in this episode. Um, and then I'll also make that into a short because um, I ran into a couple issues and, you know, I think that when I do things and things don't go well. I'm imagining that they're probably the same thing is happening to others. So, in fact, I was banging around on Ravelry this weekend. I was in the Fans of Magicraft group, and there was somebody that was having issues getting their whirl off of their wheel. Same exact thing that I struggled with. And uh, so, you know, I, I feel like by videoing my trials with that kind of stuff and overcoming it, Hopefully that gives you <laughs> at least somebody, some sort of a partnership there in terms of um, overcoming the obstacles that we all run into with this activity that we've caught ourselves up in. All right, so I did change the drive band. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to change the setup on my rows. Right now, I've got the lace kit on it, Ooh. which is the smaller flyer. The Oh my goodness, I'm spinning with the baby bobbin. I need to switch that over to the lace bobbin. <laughs> you just gotta watch me every second. All right, so this is, um, so anyways, yes, yeah, so I'm gonna put the standard flyer and the standard bobbin on and spin another half ounce of Caitlin. So Caitlin is the, one of the controls. Her wool is really fine and it just so happens that I have quite a bit of it left in my stash washed fiber that I haven't combed or anything yet and um, I'm actually I've got one point one half ounce a um, lot of this up on the shop right now and I'm gonna probably be able to get I don't know a few more ounces this is what I have left of it and normally you know I would send this to the mill for um, comb top because it's just really fiddly Lots of short bits and stuff, but I'm working through it sort of slowly. That's one of the nice things about this time of the year for me is there's not a lot going. And so little fiddly projects like this are more practical. So yes, I'm taking these out lock by lock. And little short bits are getting put in the quilt batting basket. And that's probably a lock that I'll flick. Anyway, so that's, that's um, that piece of it. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, spin some other breeds. Now, I have a really good friend. She lives pretty close to me, probably about a five minute drive. And she has Cormo sheep. I'm actually going to pause here. And I took some footage when I went over to her house. Um, because what we did was she, I traded her a half ounce of Caitlin for, actually it was kind of an unfair trade. Uh, she gave me two ounces of this comb top that she did by hand, I think. Actually, no, I think this might have done, been done by the mill. But anyways, here's some footage of her beautiful cornrows. All right, so this is the comb top that she gave me as part of the trade. I'm gonna take a half an ounce of this and spin it and see what kind of yardage I can get. It's just delectable. It's, you guys know Cormo, it's just so soft. And she's got a really cute picture of one of her sheep on here. I'm gonna put a link to her stuff. Cindy has a Etsy shop and um, she has very high standards too. She's always really careful with what she puts up there. And if there's, you know, any degree of VM or whatever, she'll make note of that. So she, I trust her. I would highly recommend if you are interested in Cormo, checking her out. So that'll be the next thing. That'll be on my lace bobbin with the lace flyer, the fine flyer. Um, like I said, when I'm spinning right now, what's on there, it's bugging me that I have that baby bobbin on there. <laughs> but what's on there right now is some comb top from my Shetlands, from my sheep. I'm combing, or spinning the fawn right now in a lace weight. It's, it's pretty, it's spinning up pretty thin. The fact that I had to change the, I have to change the drive band, I just feel like I'm getting a lot of twist in it, but I think it's going to be okay. At this point, having spun this and spinning from the lock for the lace weight, my preference is spinning from the lock. But that's just, I think it might also have to do with the fact that that's just what I'm accustomed to. Now, the other thing that Cindy traded me very generously was 15 grams. Now, this she did hand comb. Paulworth is the breed. It's, uh, I don't know anything about this breed. She said it's uh, it was a gift her husband got her, a fleece, I guess. It's really pretty, very soft. So I'm gonna add that to my experiment. Again, to see how much yardage I can get. So that's that, the comb top. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remeasure all my skeins. So what I have always done is because all of my yarns are pretty much the same, two ply worsted, spun from the lock, they're all so similar that I just use the calculation for my nitty knotty because I know how much one revolution is on the nitty knotty. However, I think um, because this is so different and I'm seeing so much variation so far, I'm going to remeasure them and just calculate each one individually based on how much one revolution, how, how long one revolution is for that particular skein. Then I'm going to wash the Rhinebeck skein, like I said, and then I'll document all that and add the data to my chart. So that's really my obsession right now as it relates to spinning. Oh, and the other thing I want to do is I want to, um, looking for a pen here because I got to write this on my notepad. I want to do, uh, um, somebody had the idea to do a drop spindle. So I'm going to use the lightest weight on my Magicraft Turkish spindle and, and try and uh, see how much yardage I get with a half an ounce. And I'll just do Caitlin with that one also. Half an ounce on the Turkish spindle. So I'll be doing that. Right, okay, so that is my spinning activity. And then the next thing is I got two projects on the needles. Um, 
The first project is re-knitting the bushel basket liner. Um, so Kim at Fairly Fiber Fun, we did a, you know, a live session on Instagram and she kind of worked with me and showed me how she calculated what the um, number of stitches I should be using and just sort of reworked the pattern. And here's where I am right now with it. I'm about five inches up the side. This is the bottom part. I've got four inches to go and then I'll do the brim. And uh, this is how much I have left of the mill end skein that I, I used. I don't know how long it was because it's when you, when I get stuff uh, mill spun, I usually just take the butt ends and those always have random lengths and I did not measure the length but I'll measure the weight and that should probably give me the same amount and I had to wind it into a ball because I frogged the whole thing and didn't I was did it up in our living room where I was watching TV and I just didn't feel like coming downstairs and putting it on the cone winder so anyway so that's what this is what I'm working on this is so super easy just a stockinette great TV knitting and also I'm using it and to practice my continental knitting. Size four needles, nice and soft. So that's that on the needles. And the other thing I'm, oh, I know what I can also show you if you haven't seen it yet. This is what the basket liner looks like with the thicker gauge yarn. So like I said, I'm about here. So I have to do all the rest of this and then just the little brim. The other project I'm working on is this cowl. And this is actually um, using my mill spun that I had done last year. So I've got two runs of mill spun yarn now in my experience. This cowl is called the Almaz cowl. And um, it has color work. It also has this linen stitch, which I've never done before. So that was fun. It's fun to learn new stitches. Um, I've been knitting since like fourth grade. My grandmother knit, my mother knit. And knitting to me isn't, I mean, it's something that I've always done. So, you know, it's always fun for me to meet new knitters that um, are so excited about it. For me, it's just, it's like eating and drinking. It's not a <laughs> so anyway, this is the, this is where I am right now. And I just have a stitch marker to tell me where I, where the beginning of the row is for the pattern. And um, it's going pretty good. I'm, I like to do this kind of stuff. It's fun. <clears throat> I'm a little bit nervous. My needles aren't long. The circular needles I purchased are, there's not a whole lot of give there. So um, using it opposite end. One thing I want to try with this is um, I saw Somebody on Instagram, Louise Megatron, I don't know how to say her name. Um, she was showed a short video of her on Instagram where she was doing color work with two strands. And one of the colors she was doing continental, the other one she was doing with the throwing the stitch over, which I thought was kind of cool. So I'm gonna try and do that before I get to the end of my color work on this pattern. Um, and I'm using the Mora and the Fawn wool. So this is, that's kind of interesting. This is the Fawn from the other mill run. And that's the Fawn from this mill run. I think the, this year's run is a little bit darker. A little different. So that's what's on the needles and Kind of what I'm focused on as it relates to spinning right now. Today I'm going to video myself changing the drive band on my Magicraft row spinning wheel. And just quickly, the Magicraft line of products, most wheels have their own 
drive band, their own specific drive band. Um, so you can't take the rose drive band and use it on your aura or on your little gem. It is actually specifically designed for the rose. The reason I want to change my drive band is the one I have right now, um, first of all, it's generic. It wasn't um, offered by Magicraft. I think I'm, I don't remember where I got it, but it's a lot smoother. It doesn't have any of the, the rough grippiness that you get with um, the Magicraft band, which is this right here. I carry these in my shop. I'm actually using the last one here to change um, my band. I have um, an order for more coming in. Magicraft has been shut down. They're gonna open up on Monday, so hopefully I'll be getting a shipment soon after they get back on, uh, in business. They take the most of the month of January off of the holidays. Um, I'm going to show you the method that's in the manual for Magicraft, <clears throat> how they recommend you change the drive band. I found a couple videos on YouTube where they unscrew the, um, I don't know what this part is called, but they unscrew these three screws and remove this to do the drive band. On the Magicraft manual, they tell you that you should be um, taking off these, um, I think they're called Conrads and putting the, the drive band on that way. You do have to disassemble in order to get it on because this is a closed loop here. So there's no way to get your drive band on or off without either unscrewing this piece or unscrewing this piece. This is the second time I've changed a drive band since I've got my wheel 19 years ago. And another reason why I need to change it is because I just installed this high-speed whorl and for whatever reason, when I'm attempting to use it, the drive band keeps on slipping off. Um, and I think it's because it's so much smaller that the distance is less between, you know, the, the, the distance that the band has to travel. So I'm gonna switch the band out and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it here. So the screws are on the inside of the pedals. I'm gonna be using a Phillips head screwdriver to, to remove them. And probably the most important thing to remember is that you want to make sure you don't accidentally reattach these on the wrong pedal. All right, so here we go. So it's really simple. Make sure your, um, your Phillips screwdriver fits the screw. You don't want to be stripping your screw head. All right, so that came off pretty easily. So the one closest to the wheel is to, is at the left, and that's how I'm going to remember when I'm putting them back together. I'm also pushing the pedal down slightly just so that there's more space for me to um, maneuver my screwdriver. Okay, let me just pull these out. Remembering that this one, the one closest to the wheel goes to this pedal. Okay, then it's just as simple as slipping off the old band and slipping on the new band. And I did mention that I have these in my shop. They're $20 plus freight. Okay, so now I'm gonna put it back. And I'm gonna try and make sure I line up the I can already feel it's pushing against the rubber, oops, stripped it, rubber uh, tube or whatever. This takes a little force. I'm not, it's not easy to go in. There's a little piece of fuzz there I'm taking. 
so it's possible I'm driving a new hole through here, but that's okay. Wouldn't that be terrible if I didn't? Yeah, see, I had to have my head way up there in order for the band to fit on here. I'm kind of excited. So this is going to make a big difference, I believe. Some of the struggles I was having with my lace kit. Yeah, there's two holes in this one, so you, obviously I can, you can tell that I've done it twice. And there's like a nice little... It's like been machined in or whatever. A nice little hole where the screw goes. This one's going in a lot easier. I'm so excited. I've needed to do this for quite a while, so. That's good enough. <laughs> so, that's pretty awesome. So now I'm gonna go downstairs and do some lace spinning and just see if moving the drive or changing the drive band. I really need to move this head down quite a bit, which is good because technically I'm supposed to have a finger space in between the, uh, die, the knob and the head here. Really had to ratchet it up pretty high to get it to fit. Bringing it down a little bit more even. Again, that's because I put the lace whirl on here. Let me get the other whirl and I can show you the difference in the size. This is the standard whorl that comes with the rose. So it is definitely bigger and so I need a smaller drive band to get that to fit. It's really tight. I feel nervous making it too tight, but... Christmas. Okay, so it's on there. Right? Okay, so this is on the smallest groove of the drive band, so I've got to hike this up to the because it's snapping off. just shifted to the smaller groove so I'm gonna hike that one up and see if it stays. It's 
good. And there you go. It's just me. Today I'm going to focus on this ewe Freya. Freya was born in 2019. Tends, she's really one of the more flashy ewes, tends to stand out with group pictures because she's got the yuglet markings, which is um, panda eyes, where the eyes have the um, contrasting color surrounding them. And so she's also got some flecket markings, little patches of spots, little black um, patches on her wool as well. Um, so her color is black. She's black based, even though she's spotted. Um, and, and I mean, even though she's predominantly white, her wool is predominantly white in color, but her genetic coloring is black. Uh, she's out of blue sapphire and rush. And blue sapphire actually had twins. She had a little ram lamb and Freya. And we didn't keep the ram lamb, he actually had horns, and we are breeding for po polled sheep, polled rams, meaning they don't have horns. Uh, the average fiber diameter on Freya's fleece last year, which was her lamb fleece, was 23.4. Her standard deviation was 5.9, come here. And her spinning fineness was 23.6, a little higher than her AFD, which remember Rich said that's not ideal or not a good indicator that it's a fine fleece challenge. So it'll be interesting to watch how her fleece progresses over time. And uh, she might be one of the ones that fleeces we want to improve on. 
so. Oh, you're just really not happy. Um, I rooed her last year, so I hope I'll be able to rue her again this year. Um, she's got a really nice long fleece length. So let's do that now. Let's take a look at her fiber. Can we look at your wool? Can we take a quick look at your wool? to do with these big mittens. Alright, come here. <laughs> Alright, so here we got Freya's fleece. So like I said, it's white, but she's technically a genetically black. Oh, it's really pretty. Huh. You can see creamy, pretty whiteness. I'm gonna give it a little tug just to see if she has started to ruin. Yes, they're Already, so we'll keep her in the coat and I'm not going to rue her until it, it warms up. The other thing about Freya, we did breed her this year. I don't remember exactly, I think we put her in with Nightly. Um, the fawn, get mugget. I mean, she's still nice and crimpy in the back here, too. So, this is a nice, this will be a really nice fleece, good length, which is something she got from her mother. So Blue Sapphire came right from Blue's Clues, who was one of the first fine fleece rams that we uh, brought in. And um, so Freya is pretty close to our original effort. A lot of our other ewes at this age are generations down. But I think she's actually the only ewe from Blue Sapphire that we're going to keep and breed. <laughs> I'm gonna get a close up of the wool here because it's really nice. All right, so there's the lock. I'll keep that and I'll get a picture of it in case this isn't showing up good. Put that in my pocket. Just, man, look at your little pink skin, you're so pretty. This is really nice. I'm pretty excited. I know white fleeces are a dime a dozen, but I don't know something about Shetland white fleeces. They're so sparkly and and it's really soft. I wonder what your AFD is going to be this year. We still have to get our samples to send in for micron testing. We haven't done that yet, but in these picture view. Oh, you're just not loving me at all. Okay. All right. You remember halter training? Let's see how you do, if you remember hands are really cold. <laughs> Let's see how you do. That's pretty good actually. <laughs> you want to get it with all your friends, don't you? Stand up for me. 